Good morning, welcome to Children's Church. We are so happy that you have joined us this morning. Today, as usual, we've got an activity for you. We've got the story coming up and Stephen is gonna be teaching us all about Jesus. So we're so excited to have you with us. Let's pray before we begin. Dear God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you that we can read all about you in the Bible. And I just pray that we would have um, really ready hearts to listen uh, really carefully to learn more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. everyone we're going to jump into Luke chapter 22 and I hope you really enjoy the pictures in this kids study bible that I have um it's pretty old maybe 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 15 17 years old but it's still really cool I'm really excited to to read this to you today if you have your own bible whoa even better you can read it again on your own time okay so we're going to read about how this is this is Jesus uh, betrayal, how um, his friends betray him and that he gets arrested by the Roman soldiers who who want to kill him. Um, but also it's the last supper, it's the last dinner time that he has with his friends. So we're going to read it together. Okay, let's, let's go. Two days before the Passover, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went out to the chief priests. He was angry and disappointed. He had expected Jesus to lead a revolt against the Romans. Now Judas was ready to betray him. I will lead him to you when there are no crowds about, he told the priests, and they paid him 30 silver coins. Where shall we meet for the Passover meal? asked Jesus' friends on the morning of the festival. It was time to get things ready. Go into the city, Jesus said. You'll see a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him to his house. There is an upstairs room where we can have our meal together. That evening, before they had sat down to eat, Jesus took a towel, poured some water into a basin and began to wash their feet. This was a servant's job and Peter was shocked. Jesus explained, You must be willing to serve one another just as I have served you, he said. Jesus knew he would not be with them much longer. He was going to die. The friends could see that something was wrong. Jesus looked so sad. One of you is going to betray me, he said at last. They were stunned. No one said anything for a minute. Then John, who was sat, who sat next to him, whispered to Jesus, Who is it? The one to whom I gave this piece of bread dipped in the sauce, Jesus answered. He gave it to Judas. Go on and do what you have to do, Jesus said to him. 
So Judas went out into the dark night. Jesus talked a lot that evening and his friends never forgot his words. He told them how much he loved them, so much. He was going to die for them. I wouldn't leave you on your own, he said. God will send his spirit to be with you and help you always. And I am going back to God to get a place ready for you. Then I will come and take you to be with me. Don't worry and don't be afraid. Jesus took a loaf of bread, thanked God for the food and shared it round. This is my body, he said. I am going to be broken like this bread to die and I will be dying for you. Then he took a cup of wine, gave thanks to God and they all shared it. This is my blood poured out for many people. My death will seal the new peace between God and his people. When the meal was over, they left the house and walked to the orchard of olive trees called Gethsemane. Betrayed. On the way there, Jesus tried to warn his friends what would happen. In just a few hours, he said, you will all run away and leave me. I never will, said Peter. But Jesus said, before the cock crows at dawn, you will say three times that you do not know me. I would die first, Peter said, and they all agreed. When they came to Gethsemane, Jesus took Peter, James and John in with him. The others sat down to wait. Come with me and keep watch, he said to the three. He was very upset. They moved in amongst the trees and Jesus knelt to pray. Father, if it is possible, he said, save me from this death, but only if that's what you want. Three times he prayed and three times he, when he went back to Peter, James and John, he found that they had fallen asleep. The third time he woke them. They could hear voices. People were coming. Torches flared. The temple guards and the chief priests, led by Judas, had come to arrest Jesus. The one I kiss is the man you want, Judas said to the soldiers. Then he went to, the, went to Jesus and kissed him. The soldiers closed in. Jesus did not try to escape or resist them, but Peter drew his sword. He cut off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant. Put your sword away, Jesus said to Peter, and he touched the man's ear and healed it. Then he turned to the chief priests. Why have you come against me with swords and clubs as if I am a criminal? He asked. There was no reply. The soldier seized him roughly by the arms and marched him off. Every one of his friends ran off and left him. Boys and girls, our story today has been about the greatest thing that Jesus has done for us. The story places us on Good Friday. It brings us to his cross and that's why we're sitting beside the one here in our church building. But let me begin by asking you a couple of questions just to answer in your mind. I wonder what you would think or how you would feel if you were treated in some different ways. Imagine if you were accused wrongly of doing something or saying something wrong. Imagine how you would feel. Your head would be saying, I really didn't do that. No, that wasn't me. How would that make you feel in here? Or perhaps, what about this? A friend lets you down. Maybe they say they are going to do something. They're going to help you with something. They're going to be there. They're going to spend time with you. They're going to play a game with you. And then they let you down. That's not a good feeling either, is it? And then what about this for a third one? What about, how would you feel? What would you think? If somebody made fun of you. Maybe spoke about the way you talk or the way you look or something else, but they make fun of you. It would make us all feel terrible. It would make us all 
feel as if we, we weren't loved. Now I hope none of those things ever, ever happens to any of you who are watching today, but all, all of, them. of them happened to Jesus. They all happened to him in the last few days of his life here on earth. Last Sunday in our Donegore Kids, it was Palm Sunday story. Remember what happened? The crowds welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem. Remember he was on the donkey. Remember how they cheered. Remember how they welcomed him. And that was Sunday. And then on the Monday, Jesus goes back into Jerusalem. It's much quieter, but he takes the day to, to teach, to teach his disciples, to teach them important things about what's going to happen to him. That was the Monday. Then on the Tuesday, he returns again. And again, he spends time with his disciples, those who, who know him best. And he teaches them stories, parables uh, about what is going to happen to him and them so that they are encouraged. And then it gets to the Wednesday of Jesus last week. And the, maybe the most important thing that happens then, maybe the worst thing, is that Judas, the person who betrayed him or sold him out, he gets money to do that. And then it takes us to the, the Thursday, the Thursday of Jesus last week. And on the Thursday, what happens? Well, I, the Bible tells us that he did lots of things, but one of the things he did, he had a meal, uh, a last meal, a special meal in an upper room with his 12 disciples. And they had the meal and then they sang and then they prayed. And then on the Thursday evening, they went off to the, the Garden of Gethsemane and something happened there. Jesus, he was arrested. He was arrested by the Romans and he was taken off and he was put into a cell. And that happened on the Thursday. And then he was tried late Thursday night, early Friday morning, and on the Friday, which we call Good Friday, well, Jesus, he was taken out to a place outside Jerusalem and he was nailed on to a cross. And that was one of the worst, most painful, terrible things that could be done to, to anyone. Now, Jesus, he did that for you and for me. He did that for our sin so that he could put it onto himself and then he would die on the cross because somebody has to pay the consequences for sin. And Jesus, he took the consequences or the just deserts onto himself so that we wouldn't have to pay for those because God is a, a just God and sin is something that he just can't put up with, can't have because he's so holy. And God, he put all of the punishment onto Jesus. And that's why he died on the cross on Good Friday. And that's why it is called Good Friday. Now we need to understand Jesus didn't deserve to die. He was perfect. He was perfect and all that he said and did and thought never one sin. But when he went to the cross, he took your sin, he took my sin, he took the sin of all the people we know in this entire world and he took all of that onto himself and he suffered. And then he gave up his life to pay the price for our sin so that we don't have to. And so our story, it's a good news story, but it's a sad story because Jesus, he had to die. He chose that. It was his plan, his mission, and he did it because he loves you and he loves me so much that he gave his life 
so that we can be forgiven, so that we can have eternal life, so that we can have Jesus with us. Because as we'll hear next Sunday, the cross and the tomb, it couldn't keep him. He rose again and he's a saviour who is alive. And whenever we ask him, he comes in and he comes into our lives, into our hearts and he fills us up with himself and he helps us every day of life. And that's a brilliant thing. And then when our lives are over way, way, way sometime in the future, well, we will be with Jesus in heaven forever and ever. And this is good news. But we also need to look forward to Easter Sunday. And that's going to be our next story. And that is the, the second greatest thing that Jesus ever did for us. He rose again so that we can have eternal life. So I hope you're looking forward to that story because I certainly am. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our craft time. Um, today, we're going to um, make a prayer jar. Um, Jesus, in the story today, um, taught us that it was really important to pray. So I thought we could make a little jar just to remind us that it's important to pray and then we could put little notes or drawings into the jar and uh, remind us of what our prayers are and then to put maybe little answers in as well um, to say when God's answered that prayer you can keep these as little uh, reminders. So a reminder to pray and then a reminder of our prayers in the little prayer jar. So I'm going to move the camera down and you can see what you've got to have. So today um, you need some paint. Okay, I've put mine on a plate and I've kind of just mixed some colours. I've got a paintbrush, I've got a jam jar um, with a lid on um, and I've got um, some water and I've got a tissue because you always get a bit messy when you're making things with paint. Um, what you have to do is you just have to paint um, a garden scene on your jam jar. Now um, I just used green for the grass at the bottom as you can see you just sort of paint it on. Um, you might need a couple of coats if your paint's not as thick like mine is um, but you can just paint the grass on and let it dry and then you can paint on flowers, um, you can paint on uh, trees, you can put the sky on, maybe a bit of the sun in the sky and you can work away at this um, and let it dry sort of between paintings um, and different colours of paint so that um, it doesn't all, all run into each other. So there we go, you can see sort of that's the base of the prayer jar there. Um, you can also use, if you want to, um, you can use things to stick onto it. So I've got some little flowers here or I've got um, a little um, ladybird. Um, you can maybe draw some animals that you can put on it. It's up to you. Um, perhaps if it's coming up to Easter, you might be able to put um, some sticks on and make like a little cross to remind you um, that Jesus was um, thinking about things that were coming um, in, the next, in the next few days for him. Um, up to you. Here's one that I've done earlier. Okay. So this is my little prayer jar and then I put my lid on and I keep it maybe beside my bed or somewhere that I would say my prayers and I can maybe have little post-its beside it and then if I get a prayer I can draw a picture of the prayer or I can maybe write what my prayer is and then I can fold it up and I can put it in my prayer jar and keep my prayer jar um, by my bed to remind me what I'm praying for. I hope you have great fun making this craft and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye. <laughs>
Thank you for joining us for Children's Church this week. We hope you have learned so much about God and how much he loves you. Have a great week and we'll see you here again next week. Bye.